Hey everybody, how's it going? So I wanted to discuss the partisan political times we find ourselves in and how that partisan divide has finally trickled its way down to right to repair. So this is House Bill 1810 in the Washington State Legislature. And as you can see, this was moved out of committee a few days ago. This is the right to repair bill that I've been pushing forward in all these different parts of the country. And this made it out of committee with every Democrat besides one in favor and every Republican voting no. <sighs> this, this makes me sad because when I used to travel around the country trying to you know, testify and lobby in favor of these bills, this was no partisan divide. I was equally likely to be laughed out of the room by a Democrat, a Libertarian, or a Republican. And I've reported several of those instances of us literally getting laughed out of the room in a bipartisan fashion by people from every political party on this very channel. But there are Republicans that have supported this in the past. It used to not be a partisan issue. If you take a look here, Lydia Brash introduced the bill in Massachusetts, in not Massachusetts, in Nebraska in 2017. She was a Republican. She actually sat us down in her office for several hours, listened to everything we had to say, listened to her constituents, listened to the pro and con arguments, and then just moved forward with something that had the support of her constituents. Tom Brandt, senator I talk about a lot on this channel, he got sick and tired of people ignoring farmers. He is a farmer. So we decided, okay, cool. I'm going to become a politician. Let me see if I can get something pushed forward myself. He introduced the right to repair bill in his state as a Republican. It got moved out of committee recently. And now it will be put up for a vote by the state Senate, which is really, really cool. And in the state of Washington, you even have people who are Republicans that have supported this in the past. Unfortunately, for the right to repair side, senators like Doug Erickson, who were actually pretty pro right to repair, uh, he, he died of COVID last year. Um, so... Rest in peace, sir. Now, the, the problem here is that this really is something that used to not be a partisan issue. And even, you know, even papers like the National Review will say, as I posted in a video last week, right to repair, consumer movement that the left and right should agree on. Even they see that there are some things that people who are on both sides of the political aisle can agree on. Like when I buy something, it would be really nice if I had the ability to fix it. And I think that we have to figure out a way to frame this so that it doesn't wind up becoming just some culture war casualty, where in a state like Washington, the Democrats voted for it, therefore Republicans look and go, well, Democrats voted for it, so I'm going to vote against it. Or vice versa, you go to Nebraska, where you see all of the Republicans who have their constituents being rural farmers are voting in favor of right to repair to support their constituents. So Democrats look at it and go, oh, Republicans voted for it, so I'm going to do the opposite of whatever they did. That would truly be the death of the ability of anything to, to progress in this country. And I think we have to start coming up with framing and figuring out what the framing should be so that it can be framed as something that is positive to both sides. Again, when I meet rural farmers, when I meet people who are Republicans, who value freedom, who value you know um, self-sustainability and all of that kind of stuff, and you know America, freedom and all that, they just don't strike me as people that want Tim Cook telling them that they're too stupid to be able to work work on their own stuff. And they, they tend to be people that don't want big tech CEOs to have control over their property, what they do with it, and um, all of this. And, and I think maybe framing it in that type of way might uh, be helpful in terms of actually getting past some of these partisan divides and realizing that it, that you shouldn't just vote the opposite of what your opposition po uh, does because we are in this weird little political cold civil war amongst the parties in the United States where there is so much hatred for people on the other side. I'm just going to do literally the exact opposite of whatever they do because if you're doing this and I'm the opposite political opinion of you, that must mean that whatever this is, is evil, and I'm going to do the opposite. It's just, you, you see this happening in more and more areas, and it really made me sad to see that actual right down the middle so partisan divide with an issue like right to repair, which to this point really seems to have avoided any, it's becoming any sort of casualty of a culture war. Yeah, right to repair hasn't wound up on Rachel Maddow or Tucker Carlson as something that gets laughed at or called horrible or whatever else. And, but like, I'm kind of scared of that happening now. Because when you see votes like that happen, I don't know, it just sucks. Let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments down below and also any ideas on how to make sure that this doesn't wind up becoming some sort of cultural war issue that winds up getting diluted and going nowhere like many other things in the U.S. simply because Republicans and Democrats hate each other. I could always use your advice. That's it for today. And as always, 
I hope you learned something. And above all, I hope that I get to learn something from all of you so that I can do better in my own advocacy work. Thank you, as always, for your support, for your comments, for your suggestions, and above all, for the donating damn near a million dollars so that I actually have the ability to lobby in all these states to begin with and fund grassroots movements and you know, so on and grassroots support and education and so on and so forth. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.